So, does the solar eclipse of April the 8th, 2024 have prophetic significance? Might surprise you with my answer. Yes, it does. Just not in the way that you might think. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Justin Peters. I hope that this finds you and your family doing well today. I want to thank you so much for joining me. Boy, there's been a lot in the news lately, has there not, about the big solar eclipse. Much anticipated. In fact, I am recording this on the day of the solar eclipse. In fact, um, by my reckoning, it is just about completed. Uh, just uh, The big shadow has just about made its way all the way across the continental United States. Maybe not quite yet, but it's, it's pretty much over with. And if you were expecting to be raptured, well, um, I hope I didn't miss the rapture <laughs> because if the rapture has occurred, um, I missed it. But uh, boy, there's been a lot. Uh, oh, it's a big prophetic significance and charismatics all over the place have been talking about... Um, the prophetic significance of this eclipse. And as I said in the intro, there is a significance to it, but just not in the way in which most charismatics might think. So I want to show you a short video clip. This is from Troy Brewer. He uh, has He's a head of Troy Brewer Ministries in Burleson, Texas. And uh, he made a, a video on, well, he's done a number of them, actually, but he went on the set of Daystar. Daystar is the second largest Christian, quote unquote, television network, uh, second only to TBN. Last I checked anyway, it was just a little bit smaller than TBN, but um, but nonetheless, big deal, has gives platforms to all manner of false teachers. Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Jesse Duplantis, Andrew Womack, all the usual suspects, they find a welcoming home on TBN. Uh, recently, Michael Brown was interviewed on the set of TBN as well. So uh, charismatics definitely find a home there. But watch this video from Troy Brewer as he's telling us about the significance of the big solar eclipse. That it actually happens on April the 8th. All right, you know, you know what April 8th is. It's 4-8. Like, okay, 4-8, that's what it is. Why is that a big deal? It's not. It's not a big deal. Because Exodus 4 verse 8 is where God Almighty tell Moses, if they will not hear you and believe you for the first sign, they will for the second. Okay, dear friends, we are not in ancient Egypt. We are not Hebrews in ancient Egypt awaiting our deliverance out of slavery, about to leave Egypt and cross the Red Sea and uh, wander around in the wilderness for 40 years and then, uh, you know, hopefully get to the problem. That, that's not us. We're a little bit past that now. We're about 3,300 or so years past that. That's extraordinary to me. Again, that was something else that I almost fell down over. Exodus 4 verse 8 says, if they do not believe you or heed my message of the first sign, they may believe the message of the second or the latter sign. And that, that is a 4-8 scripture, friends, and this actually happens on 4-8. <laughs> well, it is the 4-8 uh, if you live, <laughs> sorry, if you live in the United States of America. But if you live just about anywhere else on the planet, it's not 4-8. It's 8-4-2024 because the United States is, is, is just about the only country that uses the uh, month-day-year designation for our dates. Almost every other country uses either the day-month-year or some countries use the year day month, but we're just about the only ones that use month, day, year. So you see, what a this is such a dumb thing to say, but boy, it gets clicks. Uh, but boy, it, it is, it's, it's dumb. It's ignorant. Um, it is a, a, a way of looking at the Bible reading. I mean, like you're reading the red, white, and blue into scripture. Um, sorry, dear friends, there's only been one nation in the entire history of the planet that's ever been in a covenant relationship with God, and it ain't the United States of America. It is Israel. 
<laughs> so I was looking through this and whenever I first started looking at this, I was like, Lord Jesus, what are you doing? And the Lord told me, Troy, pay attention to where it first enters, to where it first enters in at. And the place where it first enters in at is this place that is called Eagle Pass. Okay, dear friends, the first place it enters in at is not Eagle Pass, notwithstanding the bad grammar, but it is not Eagle Pass. The first place where the solar eclipse enters in at is in Mexico. Uh, it hits Mexico before it does the United States of America. But again, this is, this is a way of looking at the Bible through a red, white, and blue lens. So it, it, you know, it, it's just absurd. But you know what's worse than that? What is exponentially worse than this kind of stupidity? Is he is, just like charismatics do, all the time putting words in God's mouth he did not say. Troy Brewer said that he asked Jesus, Lord, what are you trying to say? And, and, Jesus, and he said, and Jesus told me, pay attention to where it enters in at. I, I guess Jesus has bad grammar. What are you doing? And the Lord told me, Troy, pay attention to where it first enters, to where it first enters in at. Friends, Jesus didn't say that to Troy Brewer. But it is just charismatics do this with such frequency that it does not even bother their conscience to put words in God's mouth he did not say. Jesus didn't say that. That, that, is, that is one of the things that strikes me over and over and over about the charismatic movement is that they do it does not bother them in the slightest when they put words in God's mouth that he did not say. But I tell you what, if, if they were reading their Bibles, if they actually cared about Scripture, they would be trembling before God as they do this. But they don't. It's just not a big deal. Now, Eagle Pass is a very historical place, but not only is it historical in a long time ago, it's actually historical in current events. Have you seen anything in the news about Eagle Pass recently? Now, for all of our Daystar family that's watching all over the planet Earth, you probably wouldn't know that here locally, there's been a tremendous controversy at Eagles Pass. Boom, there it goes. So for all of the other people, the Daystar family around the world, not in the United States, who maybe wouldn't know that there's been a big controversy at Eagles Pass, Texas. Uh, yeah, Troy, you know what else they might not know? That we designate our dates as month, day, year. But I digress. And friends, whenever it enters in there, again, it's going to go across all. There it is right there. That is Eagle Pass. And whenever this actually takes place, it, I, I know that I know what I know what an Eagle Pass is prophetically. If you had a dream and it's like, what, Troy, I saw something called Eagle Pass. I would say you need to look at Matthew chapter two. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 24, and it's where Jesus himself is talking about the coming of the Lord, and he's talking about the rapture of the church, and whenever he's talking about the rapture of the church, he calls it where the eagles gather. Oh, good grief. Dear friends, that text has absolutely nothing to do with eagles past Texas. This eclipse has absolutely nothing to do with the rapture or the tribulation or the return of Christ. And I say that as someone who is premillennial in his eschatology. I mean, this is just embarrassing. And to say that Exodus 4.8 is, is somehow correlated to uh, April 8th, that is absurd. I, let me just, let's play this game just a little bit, shall we? So Exodus 4, 8, and so it will be, if they will not believe you or listen to the witness of the first sign, they may believe the witness of this last sign. Now, by the way, the first sign you see was the uh, solar eclipse that we saw in this country in 2017. This one is the second sign, don't you know? So, uh, <laughs> This is just patently absurd. Patently absurd. But let's, uh, why Exodus 4 8? Why not Genesis 4 8? Maybe that's a sign. Let's look at Genesis 4 8, shall we? Then Cain spoke to Abel, his brother, and it happened when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. 
Ooh, maybe that, maybe, maybe somebody's going to rise up and kill somebody. I mean, maybe, ooh, maybe that's talking about some, some important person being killed on April the 8th. It's so stupid. Let's look at numbers 4 8, shall we? And they shall spread over them a cloth of scarlet material and cover the same with a covering of porpoise skin, and they shall insert its pole. Ooh, porpoise skin. You know what? Maybe there's some prophetic significance to, uh, Ace Ventura pet detective, Snowflake. The highly trained dolphin. Perhaps the smartest mammal in the animal kingdom. Did you see how he knew exactly what I wanted him to do? As if our minds were somehow in total synchronization. They've been known to save men at sea, you know. They have their own language. Snowflake! Come here, Snowflake! Bring me the gun! Again! 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 <laughs> Stupid fish! Or what about Deuteronomy 4.8? Maybe there's some significance there. Maybe there's a connection to the eclipse there. Or what great nation is there that has statutes and judgments as righteous as this whole law, which I am setting before you today? Sure, it in the United States of America, I guarantee you that. Dear friends, this is absurd. And you see charismatics do this all the time, this numerological lunacy, uh, gematria kind of stuff. It's just, it's utter stupidity. And they use this as a means to raise money, you know, sow a seed based on some, you know, verse in Psalms or Proverbs, you know. I, I mean, they do this kind of stuff all the time. And, and the fact that Daystar gave him a big platform, I mean, he's there on the set of Daystar. I mean, this is just absurd, absolutely absurd. And the only way that these charismatic hucksters can continue is that they are banking on the biblical ignorance of their followers. The biblical ignorance of their followers. And, for that matter, dear friends, uh, chapter divisions and verse numbers are not inspired. They were not included in the original manuscripts. In fact, they were not added until a thousand years after all of the manuscripts, the Greek and, well, longer for the Hebrew, but Greek texts were closed and finished and completed. That came, you know, roughly a thousand years later. And even then changed forms a whole bunch of times, many times to what we have in our modern Bibles today. So this is just absolutely absurd. It just the totality, which was only 70 miles wide, Brother Sid, it went over seven cities called Salem. And what did that speak of? It spoke of seven years of peace. And this was this was seven years ago. On April the 8th, we have the next Great American Eclipse. And it enters into a place called Eagle Pass, Texas. And then it crosses over the United States. And as it does, this one, my friend, it makes a kind of an X, which, of course, is the Tav, in the ancient Hebrew, and that means a prophetic sign. If you look at the two of them together, it looks like an X across our nation. So the significance of all of these things uh, tells me that Jesus is coming back soon, and it's a lot sooner than, than, than what you think. So that should also get our attention and that we understand that this is a huge prophetic sign. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. There's only a couple of possibilities here, dear friends. If Troy Brewer actually believes this lunacy, then he he is not qualified to be in ministry. He's just not. I mean, if his kind of if his thinking is that dumb uh, and that ignorant, then he has no business being in ministry at all. Get out of the ministry. My guess is though that he knows full well that there's no significance to 
uh, Exodus 4, 8, because it's April 8th and all this. Uh, he's, he's, I don't think he's stupid. I don't think he's a stupid man. He knows there's no significance. He, know the, he knows the chapter divisions and verse numbers weren't in the original manuscripts. He knows this. He knows that we are uh, one of the few countries that actually designates our dates that way. He knows these things. So that leaves you to the other conclusion is that he is intentionally deceiving you. Intentionally deceiving you. And every single charismatic prophet that does this, and there are legions of them, they do the same thing that he does. They are intentionally deceiving you. In which case, they are not qualified to be in ministry. So either way you go with it, they're not qualified to be in ministry. I want to show you this video from uh, the WWUTT channel. When we understand the text, it's uh, it's done by a friend of mine named Gabe Hughes, Gabriel Hughes, and it's a really good channel. If you have not yet subscribed to the WWUTT channel, I would encourage you to do so. But he put this together in a very uh, cogent, entertaining way, and I think it will you'll find this interesting. Here we go. <laughs> Hey, remember those four blood moons prophecies in the 2010s? John Hagee wrote a best-selling book. There was even a theatrical film. And what happened? Absolutely nothing. Did a single false prophet lose their job after that? And here we are again with another eclipse and more wannabe prophets saying Jesus is coming soon, even though the Bible already says that. Let's just put this to rest right here. Natural solar eclipses are never mentioned in the Bible. They are not prophetic signs of anything. And don't let the YouTube and TikTok prophets tell you otherwise, no matter how many millions of views they have. But Gabe, haven't you heard that the great solar eclipse of 2017 passed over seven cities named Salem, which is short for Jerusalem? So what? Jerusalem is in the Middle East, not the United States, and neither that eclipse nor this one are visible there, or by most people on the Earth. But Gabe, haven't you heard that the great solar eclipse of 2024 is going to pass over seven cities named Nineveh? Not true. The total eclipse is going to pass over two cities named Nineveh, and it will be partially visible from another five. By the way, the eclipse will be at least partially visible everywhere in the U.S. But Gabe, haven't you heard that both eclipses cross over a town called Rapture, Indiana? No, it's an unincorporated town called Rapture, and the total eclipse was not seen there in 2017, but will be in 2024. And this has no prophetic significance. Again, solar eclipses are naturally occurring. An Ohio newspaper from 1970 reported the eclipse in 2024. We can calculate when they will happen. But Jesus said no one will know the hour or the day of his return. Enjoy an eclipse for the beauty that it is. For Psalm 19.5 says that the sun runs its course with joy as God made the sun and the moon to run like clockwork. This is not a sign of the end, but you do still need to repent and turn to Christ for judgment will come at an hour you do not expect when we understand the text. Well done, Gabe. So if you have not yet subscribed to Gabe's channel, WWUTT, I would encourage you to do so link down there below in the description. And uh, so as I began this video, you might recall that I said that the eclipse is, is indeed a um, fulfillment of biblical prophecy, just not in the way in which most people have thought. It's a fulfillment, all the hoopla that we have been seeing from these charismatic prophets dealing with this eclipse. It is a fulfillment of the more certain, more sure word of prophecy that we read about in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3-4, through 4, which say this, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance to their own desires, and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. This is a fulfillment of that <laughs> more sure word of prophecy. All right, dear ones, thank you very much for joining me. Until our next time together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with you all.